trigger warning. This podcast contains descriptions of various abusive situations. Listener discretion is advised. You are listening to the Preacher Boys Podcast, a podcast shedding light on decades of mental, physical, and sexual abuse within the independent fundamental Baptist movement. The testimonies shared on this podcast are told from the personal experience and perspective of the survivors. Not all legal outcomes are known or final. Any suspect is presumed innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. Now, here is your host, Eric Skwarzynski. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Preacher Boys podcast. Today's story comes out of North Valley Baptist Church in Santa Clara, California, pastored by Jack Treber. Jack Treber has established himself as one of the biggest names in independent fundamental Baptist circles. Treber will be a featured speaker at two IFB conferences this month alone. On March 18th, 2024, he is speaking at the Old Pass Conference in Bethany, Oklahoma, with Tony Hudson, Ellen Domley, and Bruce Goddard, the last of whom you likely recognize from the recent Max documentary, Let Us Pray, A Ministry of Scandals, which exposed his numerous cover-ups of sexual abuse. Immediately after the Old Pass Conference, he will be on the platform of First Baptist Church in Hammond, Indiana, one of the most prominent churches in IFB circles and also no stranger to scandals, for the Servants Conference alongside Tom Williams, Andy Dahl, David Gibbs, and John Wilkerson. While Treber is an oft-praised figure within fundamentalism, he and his church have also drawn much criticism from former members and ex-fundamentalists in general for his proximity to and direct involvement with some major scandals associated with the IFB. In fact, one of the earliest alleged IFB abusers that I ever stumbled upon was that of Treber's brother-in-law, Mike Strofe, whose name is mentioned on the now inactive watchdog site Chuckles Travels in a handful of articles. The more I've dug into abuse within the independent fundamental Baptist movement, Strofe's name has continued to resurface here and there, with a basic outline of a story of abuse and ensuing cover-up by Treber himself that has been whispered about in ex-IFB circles for well over a decade. However, there has never been any public allegation that anybody could point to, until now. On October 19, 2022, a lawsuit was quietly filed against North Valley Baptist Church and Mike Strofe by two women, Christina Cheatham and Kimberly Craig, alleging abuse that took place near the end of the 1980s. Due to the statute of limitations, this suit would not have previously been possible. However, in 2019, California Assembly Bill No. 218 amended the law about civil suits for recovery of damages from alleged childhood sexual abuse. The bill prescribed an amendment and expansion of the definition of childhood sexual abuse, extension of the statute of limitations for commencement of civil suits, allowance of recovery of up to treble damages under certain circumstances involving a cover-up of childhood sexual assault, revival of specific childhood sexual assault claims, and exemption from the Government Tort Claims Act's claims presentation requirements for child sexual assault claims. This amendment gave both Cheatham and Craig an unprecedented opportunity to take action. I will summarize the critical allegations in this episode, but still, I'd encourage anyone interested in the story to seek a copy of the suit for clarity. So, who are the plaintiffs in this case? Christina Cheatham was born on April 4, 1971, and began attending North Valley Baptist Church when she was seven years old and in second grade. She met her abuser, Mike Strofe, through her association with North Valley Baptist Church. Kimberly Craig was born on February 16, 1972. Craig began attending North Valley Baptist Church and the church-operated school when she was 15 and in her sophomore year of high school. She met her abuser, Mike Strofe, through her association with North Valley Baptist Church. These are the plaintiffs, but who is the perpetrator? According to the suit, during his time at North Valley Baptist Church, Mike Strofe held several titles, including associate pastor, youth pastor, and sports director. Strofe also served as a basketball coach and teacher, teaching various subjects including history, math, and Bible studies. The suit also claims that he led weekly services for congregants and students at North Valley Baptist Church. Notably, Mike Strofe was, during this time, and still is, the brother-in-law of Jack Treber, the senior pastor of North Valley Baptist Church since 1976. I'm going to break down the allegations that are laid out in the suit, starting with Christina Cheatham. 
Christina Cheatham attended North Valley Baptist Church's school from approximately 1978 to 1989. Christina met Mike Strof when North Valley Baptist Church hired him in approximately 1984. Christina was 13 at the time. As Christina's youth pastor, Strof spent many hours counseling her, and she likewise spent many hours with him, volunteering to help with school and sports-related tasks frequently. The complaint revealed that Cheatham disclosed to Strof that she was a, quote, pleaser and would always do her best to stay out of trouble. What follows in the report is a harrowing textbook example of grooming and subsequent abuse. I'll quote directly from the suit here. In 1985, when Cheatham was 14 years old and a sophomore in high school, Strofe began grooming her for sexual abuse. For example, when Cheatham sought pastoral guidance from Strofe, Strofe hugged Cheatham for the first time, in direct violation of North Valley Baptist Church's rules. Strofe warned Cheatham not to tell anyone and that he would deny it if she did. Strofe began hugging Cheatham more frequently. Cheatham served as his helper and was often pulled out of class to assist him in his office or sports closet. Once alone, Strofe would hug and kiss Cheatham, who was 15 years old. Strofe also began to fondle Cheatham's buttocks and vagina while they hugged. Over the next three years, Strofe made sexual advances on Cheatham and cultivated an unlawful and damaging sexual relationship with her. Strofe engaged in numerous acts of childhood sexual abuse, including kissing, groping, digital penetration, and oral copulation that persisted for the remainder of Cheatham's minority. Cheatham is informed and believes, and on that basis alleges, church employees were in a position to, and did, regularly observe Cheatham spending an inappropriately large amount of time alone with Strofe, both during and after school hours. North Valley Baptist Church employees who were in a position to observe the inappropriate interactions between Strofe and Cheatham knew or should have known of the inappropriate sexual relationship between Strofe and Cheatham. However, North Valley Baptist Church took no action to intervene and protect Cheatham from the ongoing abuse. The lawsuit continues with a specific situation described where, around the 1987-1988 school year, the son of a North Valley Baptist Church member told a parent that they saw Strofe and Cheatham, quote, inappropriately touching each other's feet under the table during a school meeting while several other students were present, end quote. The employee reported this. Still, Pastor Jack Treber disregarded the report, telling the employee, quote, if she didn't see it, it didn't happen, end quote. Now I'm going to break down the allegations made by Kimberly Craig in the lawsuit. Kimberly Craig began attending North Valley Baptist Church in 1987 when she was 15 years old, a sophomore in high school. That same year, Mike Strofe was her youth pastor and teacher. The suit explains that Kimberly quickly became friends with Christina and began spending time with her, often assisting Strofe with tasks in a similar manner as Cheatham. Kimberly began assisting Strofe with school and sports-related activities, including cleaning equipment, folding jerseys, and organizing schoolwork. Craig and Strofe would often be alone in Strofe's office during these tasks. Several staff members at North Valley Baptist Church witnessed Strofe and Craig enter and remain in Strofe's office alone. Identical to Christina's story, Strofe began grooming Kimberly with constant hugs, normalizing physical touch between them, and progressively getting more inappropriate and escalating until, when Kimberly was 17 years old, Strofe started to have vaginal intercourse with her. At 17 years old, Kimberly became pregnant with Strofe's child. Kimberly's dad, a North Valley Baptist Church deacon, found out she was pregnant and reported it to Jack Treber. Mike Strofe admitted to what the lawsuit labels, quote, inappropriate and unlawful sexual relationships with both Craig and Cheatham, end quote. As disturbing as the initial abuse is, the suit continues with a chilling description of the ensuing cover-up after Mike Strofe confessed to Jack Treber. Again, I'll quote directly from the lawsuit. Plaintiffs are informed and believe, and on that basis allege, that Pastor Treber arranged for Strofe and his family to transfer to a fundamentalist Baptist church out of state. Plaintiffs are informed and believe, and on that basis allege, that Pastor Treber arranged for Plaintiff Craig to move to Indiana to stay at home with a member of another fundamentalist Baptist church until she gave birth to the baby Strofe fathered. Plaintiff Craig was made to feel as if it was her fault for becoming pregnant. She was told by Pastor Treber that she should give the child up for adoption, and then she could return to North Valley Baptist Church, restored. 
Treber arranged for Craig to stay in Indiana while she was pregnant and told her it was best to stay out of sight until she was no longer pregnant. Plaintiff Craig gave birth to her child and saw the baby just one time before he was taken from her and given up for adoption. Craig returned to North Valley Baptist Church and was instructed to become as involved as possible, working and volunteering for North Valley Baptist Church until she attended college in Indiana the following year. The lawsuit proceeds to point out that had the report brought to Treber around the 1987 to 1988 school year about inappropriate contact between Christina Cheatham and Mike Strofe been addressed, it likely could have prevented future abuses by Strofe. It places a fair and necessary amount of blame on Treber, turning a blind eye to the reports he received. North Valley Baptist Church and Mike Strofe responded to the allegations with denial, saying in part that, quote, defendant denies each and every allegation, both specifically and generally, of each cause of action contained in plaintiff's complaint on file herein and the whole thereof, and further denies that plaintiffs has sustained or is entitled to recover damages in the sum alleged or in any sum whatsoever. Defendant denies that plaintiffs have sustained any injury, damage, or loss by reason of any conduct, action, or omission on the part of the defendant. End quote. You can read their entire defense in the full complaint by Christina Cheatham and Kimberly Craig by visiting the public portal for the Superior Court of California and the County of Santa Clara. There's a link to that in the show notes. The lawsuit is still ongoing. I'll continue to update you as this story develops. Thank you for listening to the Preacher Boys podcast. If you appreciated the content on the show, please leave a review on iTunes and don't forget to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter with the handle at Preacher Boys Doc. 